I want to give everybody a quick overview of everything so we can get started. So just so you know, is, is Netta here? She, she at work. So five years ago, a star who's behind me, Sister Netta, was shot three times around Trinidad with an AK-47. And I was going to see her. Star who was behind me was locked up in DC jail and called. And Star said to me, Mo, you only help the girls and the guys. You never help the gay children in the community. And I told Star, I help anybody who wants to help themselves. I met with Star when Star came home. We met at Denny's, right? And we met at Denny's, he put everybody together. E-ball, she put everybody together. E-ball, e Mike, Trey, Skittles, uh, he's around here somewhere, and we met, and I don't know if Perry Moon is in here. When I talked to them, I said, what do y'all want to do, right? Now this was during a time when the whole city was against me. I lost everything, I lost my house, my car, right? I was sleeping on my grandmother who was upstairs, she can't come down the steps couch. I was sleeping on my mother's couch, right? And there's a guy in here by the name of Donnell Perkins who gave me a house, and we were all struggling together. And we were working hard to change ourselves and make our lives better. And I want to thank my children who are in here too, who sacrificed with me. Uh, my two daughters are in here. Can we give them a round of applause? And, and, and five years later, from us working hard, and the, the first grant we got from Far Southeast, which allowed us to do a fashion show, which they wanted to do, right? It allowed us to do a fashion show at a police precinct with the help of Chief Grooms, who met with us in Chinatown to have a first meeting with the police to say they want to change, right? So, so that's how this got started. And now we have, in Ward 8, a great council member. We have a great mayor who Erica will talk about the program that helped them, which was very powerful because a lot of times you can say you want young people to do the right thing, but we can't stabilize them and they got to do all these different things to survive. It's, it's easier said than done, right? And also, I, so I see Trayon. I also want to acknowledge my friend, Mr. Lacey, who had his artists work with our youth who, to do that mural upstairs that you see upstairs. He was here with us four, five o'clock in the morning doing a mural of our youth after they took the poles upstairs in the kitchen. Eleanor Holmes Norton, the Honorable Eleanor Holmes Norton. Let's give her a round of applause. She beat me up with an uppercut and a hook because she said I called her late, but it wasn't but it wasn't like that. I called, but I couldn't reach her. And when I reached her, she responded and said, I'm there. So please accept my apologies. <laughs> right? Um, uh, the Honorable Danny Davis, let's give him a round of applause, who works with Congresswoman Norton. And the reason why Danny Davis is here is two things. In Chicago, they have a bigger gang problem than we have in D.C., right? And he just lost, I believe, his grandson or someone to homicide in Chicago, and he had authored the Second Chance Act with, I believe, Senator Portsman, and these, a lot of these young people are returned citizens, and he believes in giving people a second chance. So anytime we call him and Norton, who works together on these issues, they always respond to him, and it's very important to acknowledge our people who are working up here to deal with a lot of mess about people who don't care about people who are in this room. So. I'm just happy for you all to take the time to come in Southeast, in this hot basement, and, and, and we work together. We're going to get that together, though. And also, he's not here, but Dwayne Gaudier, I just want to thank him because one of his chief of staffs, I call her, just told us that we don't have to pay rent for July and August. Yay! Yeah. Woo! Oh, my God. Y'all just don't know. No. You don't know. We took over this lease in November. And we had to pay rent every month, and we put over $30,000 in this building to do a renovation. And these young people got the witness that you can do whatever you want to do if you believe. And you have adults working with you to show you the way. I also want to thank Sam Ford in the back who did the very first story on Check It in Chinatown. Because a lot of times, the media won't come out for something positive. So we thank all the media who came out today for something positive. 
For, for I forget, it's a sister in the back. We have a community garden out back that we're doing with our young people. And she's back there getting it beautified. Can you wave your hand? She works with Kamon Freeman next door. And the garden was actually first funded by Prince. Yes, it was started by Prince. Money from the Prince Foundation, just so you know that. This building has a spirit of an ancestor in here. So let's give Kamon a round of applause also. He's our neighbor. And we're doing great things together, and we're going to be teaching young people about nature in the back. So with that being said, I would like to bring up for, for a couple of words, to, to check it, to say a few things. And I left out Dana Floor, the uh, producer of the movie on the left-hand side. How many of y'all know Check has a movie coming out? Yeah. Can, can I announce? Oh, I can't announce yet. Oh, well, I'm going to say this. On Friday, it will be a big announcement that somebody real big in Hollywood is putting the check it film out, and it's going to go around the world, and it's going to be bigger than ever. I wish I could tell you right now, but, but guess what? They'll be on Fox 5 probably Friday, and they can talk about it, all right? So with that being said, I'd like to bring Star and Erica up to say a few words. <laughs> OK, well, I'm very excited for this day. Like, uh, I really, really couldn't wait. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. We stayed here till 4 o'clock this morning last night getting everything together. Came back at 8, 9 o'clock this morning, finished up everything. Hey, Mr. Uh, hey. And I want to thank the mayor and everybody and all y'all for actually coming. Uh, this is like actually a big step for us, like a big old change around for us, like from our past tense when we was ghetto, I guess everybody called it gang member fighting, <laughs> uh, terrorizing everywhere. But that was only, only for protection, only for protection for the LGBT. So like, I'm happy our building actually open. Uh, we're, gonna we're gonna have a lot of um, activities down here for the LGBT, especially all the youth, because we know everything that we went through, we know that a lot of people going through. And a lot of youth would not talk to just anybody, but they would talk to us. So we actually did outreach down gallery one uh, month, and they actually, uh, actually came to me and was like, Star, we will only tell our personal business to y'all, because because yeah, y'all inspire us. Y'all is the one who actually been doing it, and I watch y'all. And now, or whatever, like I, I will only tell y'all. So that's why we will actually have a lot of LGBT uh, events down here, like everything for all the youth. And I'm just happy. Thanks everybody for coming. Good afternoon. My name is Mike. Um, I, I came from. I started. I started with the check it in about 2006, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I'm 27 years old today. And like Star said, I, went, I never in a million years thought that we would be here today. I thank God that we changed our lives because we were, most of us were in, in locked up. We did a lot of time for the, the crimes that we committed because of we was fighting back because of we was getting bullied and stuff. So I may get it I may get a little emotional because it's just, it just I, I'm happy that we, we changed we decided to change our lives and I was attacked because I'm gay, I'm a gay male, I was attacked on the Metro bus and I got stabbed five times and I almost lost my life. So I look at life different today. I look at life totally different. And if Mo, Ronald Moten, that man, we have some, I can honestly say we have some attitudes on us and that man know how to deal with our attitudes and our minds. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I just, I'm just glad that we, we here today. Like I didn't, I didn't think that it was possible. So if you believe in God, it's always, it's always something possible that could happen. So, and I also want to thank the mayor for actually taking her time out and coming to hear our story and see our store. So that's what I wanted to let you guys know. Hello, everyone. I'm Erica with the Check It. I'm the treasurer. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my transformation uh, from my struggles to transforming to doing, being successful. Um, first, I'm going to talk about career, conne uh, career Connections. They helped us a lot. Like, even though, like, little stuff was going wrong, they always was there to fix it. If it wasn't a day, it would be the next day. Um, I get nervous every time I talk. <laughs> I 
I get nervous. Um, I'm just thankful and I'm happy that we did this transformation and on the right path and I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that I'm, I became a woman and made better decisions. You know, I don't have to do no more petty crimes. Other than that, I want to introduce my mayor, Ms. Carl Bowser. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Check It Enterprises in Ward 8. And I, too, want to thank Ronald Moten. Ronald Moten is a peacekeeper, isn't he? No matter where he goes, he figures out a way to make sure people are getting along, mending fences, mediating problems, and finding their pathway to a good life in Washington, D.C. And he knows something about struggle, uh, and he knows about coming out on the other side. So give Ronald Moten a big round of applause. I want to thank Erica for that wonderful introduction and want to thank uh, all of you who are here. Council member, it's great to be in Ward 8. Congresswoman, uh, you're always with us fighting for, for young people. And this, this building, this story of bringing it together is really about the grassroots coming together to save kids. Uh, and we want to thank Ronald, we want to thank Diane Grooms and all of MPD who instead of saying we got a problem, let's figure out a law enforcement solution said so let's figure out a people solution and that's what happened in this case I can't wait to see the documentary see how we adults uh, can work with young people to, to help solve problems but one thing that Erica was talking about that was very real for us uh, when I became mayor uh, we had a 14 plus percent unemployment rate here in Ward 8 now it's still too high but it's gone down three percentage points in those two and a half years. And the way that we've been able to focus on it is looking for jobs for young people. So we expanded the Mayor Barry Summer Youth Program to include young people 22 to 24 years old. And we have had 3,000 young people participate in that program. Clinton Lacey and DYRS have been very focused on how to heal problems with our children who come into our care at DYRS. We stole them from New York. And I'm glad we did because he's doing a fantastic job of healing and making sure that we have opportunities to heal families uh, when they're in our care. But what Erica was talking about was career connections. And I want to thank council member and all the members of the council who've been willing to stand with us to support these opportunities. Because when uh, Check It or Far Southeast, when they identify a young person who, with a chance, it's going to make different decisions. It's going to change their lives. It's going to leave crime behind. We are able to immediately put them into a subsidized job opportunity through career, career connections, and it's made all of the difference. So I just want to say how proud I am to be here so that we can have a safe place for our LGBT youth. We know they get bullied at school, right? They get bullied at home sometimes, uh, and more and more uh, they become and they can become homeless. So having a safe place, having a place where we know we can tell kids you don't have to run and be on the streets, that we're going to get you the help that you need can make all of a difference in a young person's life. So Ronald Moten, God bless you for this, brother. Thank right? God bless you. Thank you so much. So, uh, I had a job of getting my next two congressmen in and up and out by 3 o'clock because one of them has to leave. So I'm going to bring a special lady up who advocates for the District of Columbia probably as long as I've been working in the community. Longer than I've been working in the community, which has been since 1995. So I know you've been doing it before me. Um, I just want you to know that we appreciate all your labor and once again for coming out. Without further ado, Eleanor Holmes Norton. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you, Ron. You've been working overtime for the community. <laughs> Least I can do is, is come out. Mayor Bowser, Council Member Treon. <laughs> Council Member Treon Norton. Uh, look, I, I have to tell y'all something. 
Uh, my remarks are brief because I got to get upstairs and do some shopping. <laughs> I don't know why the rest of you came here. <laughs> but I do want to say first to my good friend and colleague who was me, chairs a commission on black men and boys. We know this is men and women here. Uh, how wonderful it was or is for council mem uh, congressman uh, Danny Davis from Chicago to take precious time out from his congressional duties, taking care of his own constituents to come to Ward 8 where there's not a single vote for him. <laughs> but believe you, believe you, believe me that, that the congressman and I, when we uh, are working for black men and boys, know we are doing something that has nationwide uh, consequences. Look, I, I'm just out here to say, you know, there are a lot of overlooked young, youngsters. These youngsters who were more than overlooked, uh, but bullied and, uh, and uh, essentially abandoned, have decided to, to, to take control of their own lives. I must say, that they say to us, look what we did, why aren't the rest of you all doing it? Uh, it's it's a quite extraordinary to see young people that nobody cut a break for, cut their own break, and become what is the hardest thing to become. Let me tell you, it's easier to get a job than to start your own business and providing jobs for others. So all I'm here to say, I'm here to support you, and let's everybody hurry up so I can get upstairs. Thank you. <laughs> I also want to acknowledge, I believe it was Mr. Towns, uh, Mr. Carl Racine would have been here. He's out on vacation. Also, if you look upstairs on the, both walls, you'll see the donors, and you all can get on that wall. One side is 500 and better, the other side is 1,000 and better. Platinum, 1,000, 500 gold. Carl Racine is one of the gold donors who gave $500, right? So he said, if anybody else do 500, he'd go up to 1,000. So, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, so I'm just playing. So it's important when you leave to donate because there are some machines, you see that room in the back? Everything they need to do a world-class clothing company will be in that room. But it's some machines we need, one of them costs $11,000 and one of them costs $3,000. So we are still raising money, right? But they make the best of what they got. You'll see that upstairs in that room. So without further ado, this guy right here, like I said, I love him to death because I love his spirit. Um, they work together and fight for black people. And before I get beat up, Ms. Schiller, I, I apologize, the director of the LGBTQ office is here. Please give her a round of applause. She does a marvelous job advocating for the community. So, please forgive me. No, forgive me. So, Mr. Davis, I really appreciate you. Like I said, the Second Chance Act means a whole lot to us. You were leading in the reform effort to change those mandatory minimums that they're trying to bring back, right? And we really appreciate you speaking up for the people that everybody forgot about. We love you, brother. Can you please come up and say a few words? And Ravel, my man. Thank you very much. And it was just reintroduced last week by Representative Simpson Brennan from Wisconsin. So that means that it's going to be renewed, it's going to be refunded, and it's going to keep going. Let me be brief and quick, because I'm the guy that's got to go. I'm due on the floor <laughs> in a few minutes. Yeah. But it's not every day that I get a chance to sit next to and beside just a tremendous mayor doing an outstanding job and I get a chance to help her take her jacket off. <laughs> hey, so you know I'll be back. And to see so many young people all together, young member of the council, young activists, young people engaged, it's my pleasure simply to be here. And then there are people like myself and Eleanor Holmes Norton. We've been around a long time. We really have. We've seen a lot of things. We've seen a lot of changes, but to see an economic enterprise like we're seeing today, wrapped around all of the social work activity that has to take place. I just left uh, the chaplains of the Senate's office, Barry Black, and one of the most eloquent
people you will ever see, hear, or encounter. And he was telling me that there was a time when he was locked up, that his daddy was locked up. And now look at where he is today. Carry on, it's just good to be here. Eleanor, it's good to work with you. God bless you, and it's good to see all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, before I bring Trayon White, I want to acknowledge three people that's in here. Earl Folks, the Center for Black Equity, who's actually ripping, written a space out of here and wrapping his arms around the check it. If you look at all the pride events that are going around the country, Mr. Folks' organization is the ones that help put those together and advocate for the community. Also, TSC Enterprises, who's helping check it with their books and also is going to be teaching young people in the area financial literacy, has an office space upstairs. And Brother Irk Weaver, the National Association of Advancement of Returned Citizens, also is going to have an office upstairs. And in the back, I want to thank Charles Jones for coming out from Project Empowerment, who a lot of our youth have graduated from the program as well. So I hope I didn't leave too many people out. Without further ado, I'd like to bring up the Honorable Trayon Muscle Man <laughs> White. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. I don't know about the muscles, but uh, I'm hoping we're in a lot of muscle shirts lately, so that's, that's another topic. Uh, but I'm excited to be here today. In the back, in the back, thank you, thank you. First, my job is to welcome you all to Ward 8. I want to thank Mayor Bowser, uh, Congresswoman Ellen Holmes Norton, uh, Deputy Mayor Snowden, Ms. Director Lacey, all you all are gathered here today because it's really, it's really a change in D.C. Can you quiet down in the back for me, please? Thank you. Uh, when I first started hearing about Check It, as you know, it was about a lot of chaos, a lot of drama downtown. Uh, ben and Roe, we had to run over there a few times, uh, Chinatown, and I think it's more than just creating a, a clothing line. It's creating a new brand for our young people. And so to see them transform their lives, you know, they're giving inspiration to another generation of young people. I've been out here on the weekends and seen them in meetings on the weekends and painting and, and working and meeting and strategizing. And it's not just about, about the clothing line, which you want to support. It's about a life change. And these young people have truly been inspiring, it's not to this generation, but generation behind them. And I'm so proud to see them at the forums, at the hearings, on the front line, fighting for justice and peace, right here on Martin Luther King Avenue across the city. Get them, a, get them another round of applause. One thing that I know is that bad things happen when good people do nothing. And I want to give a special kudos to Ronald Moton for standing in the gap for a generation. And he told you briefly about his story, but it takes a champion really to be there for other people. Because, uh, you know, uh, the community, uh, with, with the many social ills we face today, they go through a lot with homelessness, with being uh, attacked, with low self-esteem, and they kind of come together for survival mode. And this is just one effort that he's done over the many years I've been around to give back and support people from all walks of life. And I think this speaks volumes to being right here on Martin King Jr. Avenue. And that's about equality, but equity. People in our community want to participate. People in our community want to own our own businesses. And economic empowerment is what our young people need. Because they, when they're pushed to the corner, they decide to do things they normally want to do because we're in survival mode. I know that story far, far too often. So I want to acknowledge them and those who are not here, because I've seen them grow so much over the years. And the way they speak now, the way they carry themselves now, the way they talk now, is truly transformative. So I want to thank you all for having me here today and acknowledge uh, Prairie Moon, I see you in the back, for giving back to these young people. And you all are going to do tremendous things. It goes beyond just this, this, uh, this store here today. I want to encourage you all to donate. I donated before I make another donation again. Uh, we got to give back and we got to put our money where our mouth is. Say, put your money. Put your money. See, y'all don't even say it right. I see that. Put your money, Put your money. where your mouth is. Your mouth. And that's what it's about, putting our money where our mouth is. Economic empowerment is needed in this community, and this is a good start. Thank you, Mr. Mo. Also, I see the Roman Leaders, the Department of Rex in here, Marcus Ellis for Safer Stronger, um, Jose Cuttingham from the D.C. GOP. It's a diverse, there's a lot of people in here. I thank everybody for coming out. Few things I want to tell you. After Mr. Lacey speaks, can we let the mayor go upstairs to the front so we can do the ribbon cutting? Everybody else is going to face the mayor so we can do the ribbon cutting. It won't be long. We're going to do it real fast, right? But this is amazing. Am I right? Yeah. Is this amazing? Yeah. And just so you know, this is just not a store. This is a community space where community events will happen, community cookouts out back. 
right? And programming. So we're gonna be working with Mr. Folks, we're gonna be working with CSC, NOC, and other partners in the community to do things in this space. So this is for the community, for us all to come together and do great things within our community. So without further ado, Mr. Lacey, can you please come up front? Thank you, thank you, Mo, and congratulations to you and to our wonderful, great leaders. Leaders, first of all, who I'd like to acknowledge is our young people who made this happen. Can we give them another round of applause? And to Madam Mayor, Madam Holmes Norton, and Director, and all of the city leaders, I applaud your bravery and your leadership to collaborate with such a strong community leader and your understanding that it takes a collaboration between government and community to make all of these dreams come true. And so it's an honor to be here in your midst. It's an honor to serve in this district for, with you, Madam Mayor, and with all of you. And with all the people in the audience, I just want to say that we are standing on the shoulders of great people who sacrificed blood, sweat, and tears for us to be here. And so we have an awesome responsibility in front of us. And the greatest of those responsibilities is to surround our young people, to support them, to provide resources, and to pave a way for them to be who they can be. That we know that they are much more than their worst day, than their worst experience, than their worst mistake, that they have greatness beyond our own imagination. And we're blessed and so happy to be here, to be able to support them and watch them become the leaders that they're becoming, to continue to make this district the greatest jurisdiction in this nation. We have wonderful assets, we have wonderful leaders, we have awesome community members, awesome elected officials, and most of all, we have awesome young people and families. And so I'm so encouraged, and I hope you'll join me in this sense of encouragement, and again, give our young people a round of applause. So what I just want to acknowledge somebody who came through. I'm not going to make you speak, Lawrence, because you, you. <laughs> So Lawrence is one of the advocates for Check It, who supports Check It. Lawrence from Star, Empire, Atlanta Housewives, and everything else. So anytime you can get somebody like this to come all the way from Atlanta, all the way from Atlanta just for this. Lawrence was not scheduled to be here today. I called Lawrence, and I met Lawrence through neutral friends Donnell Perkins and Wendy, two of my best friends, and when they told him about Check, he said, I want to meet them, I want to be a part of it. So I just want to thank you for coming all the way up here, because you got a lot of celebrities, right? And they start smelling themselves, and they never want to get back to the community. This is the second time he's come up here for Check It. And I just want to, I just want to commend you and thank you for being an inspiration for them and for other people to know that some of our people do get back. And we really appreciate you. And your name is on our wall of fame upstairs. And, uh, and there, there are bigger and better things to be coming. Stay tuned. Check it, check it, check it. Yeah.